What's up, y'all? You're listening to the Brazos Sports Preps Cast. I'm Alex Miller with the Eagle, joined always by Andrew Tenio and Jake Weiss. What's up, fellas? Uh, I'm just super excited, man. We're kind of the bye week's kind of over now, but for most teams, at least, they should be getting into the regular, the rest of the district slates. No bye weeks left, so you know, after a bit of a slower week, I'm starting to get amped up again a little bit. Man, I'm the opposite. I kind of wish we had another bye <laughs> week. Like that, that went by a little too fast. You know, not having everybody playing now, everybody's playing. You're looking at the list. You're like, it's a lot of, lot of, lot to talk about. Well, let's take a little rewind. We'll do some mid-season superlatives, talking best team, best player, uh, breakout player, you know, surprise team, those kind of things, as we've kind of gotten a good sample size of the season. Guys, we'll start with best team. Jake, lead us off. Who are you going with, guy? Easy. Uh, Consol. And consolidate. Easy. Uh Beat College Station for the first time ever. You're in the driver's seat in district currently, as of now. You know, knock on wood there. Uh, but yeah, console, console, easy choice for me. Andrew, um, if we're staying in the 5A, then I mean, College Station's got to be up there as well. You know, obviously that was that game was you know deciding a lot of things, and I think over the course of the next four or five weeks, College Station can continue to grow with the slate they've got upcoming. Um, they're a team that I feel like will just over the course years get better and better. So I'm going to stay in 5A. I'm going to go with Lexington, ranked number four right now, down in 3A Division Two. Look, they're just soaring past everybody, and it, it's not, it's really not even close. Mm. They got a they got a big test this week with Thrall. Thrall's five and one. They'll be playing for the district lead next week. They got a big home game against Blanco. If they can win those two games, the Eagles are really bona fide state yeah. contenders because this is a pretty solid district. It's probably not the best district in 3A Division Two, but Got a really good region, right? We we all know that. We'll probably be talking about it here over the next month. But, you know, with what Lexington's got cooking on offense, backed by some of their defensive performances, I mean, the Eagles are going to be a really hard team to beat over the second half of the season, in my mm-hmm. opinion. So, and hey, uh, honorable mention on that regard, too. Braz is Christian, right? Mm-hmm. They've been yeah. flying mm-hmm. under the radar because they're a private school team. But, look, they are solid, okay? Cooper Murr, dynamic at quarterback. Jackson Caffey, Truett Goodick. I mean, they're solid options and weapons, right? They're forcing turnovers on defense. They're about to enter a really tough district slate. Um, and starts this week. Starts this week with Hallettsville Sacred Heart. They get Central Texas Christian next week. Um, that's probably going to be the toughest team on their schedule. We're going to learn a lot about this Brazos Christian team over the next three weeks. And if they can come out on top – I mean, they're the team. They're one of the teams to beat down there in that taps level. So I, I don't want to give too many honorable mentions, but quickly slide. In. I think Franklin also can still get in that conversation towards the second half of the year. I know they had a couple of losses against two really good teams, but I think as they get further in the year, they they could be a team that slide in that conversation as well. All right, how about best player, Andrew? We'll start with you. I mean, I feel like at this moment the conversation begins and ends with Jacoby Dixon. I'd, I'd run him the running back. Uh, not only on the field, I think he has 15 touchdowns this year. Leads the Brazos Valley, 1,164 yards, 15 touchdowns. Yeah, and he probably had like eight against Colleen, some some sort of number like that. He's been getting numerous Power 4 offers as well. So, I mean, for me, it begins and ends with Dixon. Jake? All right. Well, that was my number one too. Uh, was Jacoby? Um, actually, I gotta say, quick aside, this was actually the hardest. For some reason, this was the hardest question of the of the questions we're going over. I don't know why, but uh, this was the hardest one for me. Um, I'm going to go with a guy who's on an undefeated team right now. Uh, that honestly, he could probably be. There's a case I feel like for him to be number one too. It's Jaquise Martin, mm-hmm. Rudder. Um, you know, it, it's kind of funny because with Jaquise, you know, we've been pretty much watching him do what he does for what four years now so it's kind of like you know our next one I don't know don't want to give any spoilers away but our next one's breakout player so it's kind of funny because with Jaquise it's kind of been like yeah he's just been doing this since he was a freshman so for me I've got him under best player because I mean he's doing what he's been doing but you know I'd probably say for the first time since he was a freshman he's got a a, a quarterback that can really kind of match his ability to get him the ball and uh, I mean we're seeing it Jaquise has got what 31 receptions 750 uh, yards, 13 touchdowns at this point. I mean, his team's 5-0. and He's, you know, I know they've got a lot of playmakers on that team. He's not the only guy. But, uh, yeah, I'd go with Jaquise for right now. 
those were my two guys. Um, and I, I think I think there are some guys that are probably maybe in the conversation, but I think those two in particular are, are head and shoulders ahead of the rest of the the area right now. And it's crazy. They're in the same district. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, you look at that district, there's a lot of talent in that district. Um, between Rudder and Waco University, who are going to play on Friday night, we'll yeah. talk about that game here in a little bit. Um, I mean, there there is a lot of there's a lot of top end star power that you know Rudder's gonna Rudder's it, it's gonna get real for them really quick, right? First two games, first two yeah. games of district, and so you know Rudder's got some big opportunities right in front of them, and uh, we'll see if guys like Jaquise Martin can can step up and make the plays to deliver what would be some huge wins for them mm-hmm. starting district play. All right. How about breakout player? I know what mine is, and I think you guys would probably agree, so I'm not going to – but I also have a couple other guys on here that I think are worthy of being mentioned. So, Andrew, you can go first. (laughs) All right, thank you, thank you. What a nice guy. Uh, I I mean, Javen Jesse. I mean, we're going to continue to talk about Rudder. I feel like a decent amount of this show, just not only just what he's put up, but the fact that we kind of talked at the beginning of the year – he was a late addition. Like like he was new to all of this. I mean, he didn't he didn't know he was going to get the starting the starting position until the day of the game. Their for their opener against West Fork. So not only his stats have been impressive, but also the way he's kind of handled himself and how he's been able to gel with the offense so effortlessly, especially considering he had essentially barely any prep to get ready for this thing. I mean, that's that's maybe one of the most impressive things I've seen out of Jesse uh, outside of his obvious, you know, stats and skill talents and whatnot. So Jake, um, man, I kind of can I give my number two and number three, or I don't sure. want to take any of your because I know give you have your some number two, too. and if and if it's on my list, I'll mention both of them. Okay, uh, and I guess I can always yeah. Okay, so my number two is Zach Coster, College Station, uh, wide receiver, junior. Uh, you know, we knew we knew about the big names. We knew Verdugo. We knew Vela. We knew those guys were going to be back pe- catching passes. This knew season. the running backs. We knew yeah. the running backs. Uh, but at wide receiver, you know, Peyton Cashin was gone. Jake Pivato was gone. So you were kind of wondering, like, okay, who was going to step up there? And, uh, I mean, what, first varsity game uh, goes out there. I think, Alex, you covered that game, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Went out there, set the school record for, uh, was it most yards or most receptions? Yards. Yards. So, uh, I mean, that kind of just, hey, right, right away it's like, well, you know, we know who he is now. Uh, and since then, I mean, we've heard his name called practically every game. 37 receptions, 574 yards. Uh, he leads the Brazos Valley right now in receiving yards. So, uh, yeah, kudos to Zach. I'm going with Wesley Couch from a and Consolidated. That was my third, yeah. number three. Man, man, Jake and I are on the same page today. Yeah, he's leading the team with 56 tackles. He's been a force on special teams. I mean, the dude's just a wrecking ball. I mean, Consol plays with a very ferocious defensive attack and he just seems to be the epitome of what they do they get after you they're gritty they hit you hard they're they're getting after you every play and you know Consol's defense has won them some games this year we've talked about that and Wesley has been a guy that's really been at the forefront of that force so far this season mm-hmm. alongside some really other good guys yeah. Jake you wrote about Cannon Kieschnick in your feature this week he's been a really good player and so has Puna Fochetti who you've also written about quite a bit but Wesley man just bust on the scene and has really had a great season Absolutely. all right how about biggest surprise team mm. I'm gonna go first go okay I'm going with Caldwell mm. okay Caldwell they end the losing streak it's a happy day over there in Burleson County they're two and three overall. They've they've won another game. It wasn't just a one hit wonder. It'd be mm-hmm. Smithville. They're yep. favored over Giddings. They should have beat Gerald. R.I.P. to that. Robinson was a but close one too. And Robinson was, was a close one. Quarter. Um, they're favored over Giddings this week. This is a six team district. If they can win this one, you really probably only need one more win to make the playoffs. I mean, how? How neat is that? Like, this is a team that had lost, like, what, 40 straight games? 20, uh, 29. 28. 28. Jeez, 28. I'm sorry. <laughs> 28. <yeah. laughs> I, 28. Um, my 28. apologies to everyone in Caldwell. It was a long losing streak, needless to say. And they only they only probably need two more wins to make the playoffs. I mean, if that's not a surprise, I don't know what is. 
Fair enough. Fair Andrew, enough. you can go next. All right. I, I've been looking over your sheet. And yeah, you, you, you know, have I one of that. You actually. have one of mine that I do. So I, I'm hoping you say them. So I'm going to go to another. How about BV Chia? Someone we haven't really talked oh, about wow, too okay. much outside of the Huntsville Alpha Omega Academy, which is a very good program. Uh, BV Chia has kind of been on the rise a little bit. Pote's done a really good job at quarterback. Still, Morgan's done a great job both ways. They're finding their stride. How about four and one, the four and one Mustangs? So give me BV Chia. Well, man, okay, neither of y'all took three, Three. I mean, so, okay, weirdly enough, I didn't have them on the paper, but as soon as you said, for some reason, I think it's because they both start with the same letter, when you said Lexington for best team, it immediately made me go, oh, I forgot this team on Biggest Surprise, Leon. Mm. New offense for them, uh, you know, they haven't hit district just yet, their district opener is this week, I believe, against Norman G, uh, but, you know, it was a new offense, I talked to them in the preseason, you know, they were going from a spread approach to more of a, you know, just, I think it was a sl- sl- slot T, wing T, wing T approach. And they were a little worried, you know, hey, they, they were kind of thinking, a little hesitant. They were like, hey, you know, by the time we get to the second second scrimmage, after that second uh, scrimmage, we'll have the offense figured out. But I got to admit, you know, there was always a part of me that was kind of like, man, you're going from a spread in, in one year, then to just, we're going to just run the ball. Like, I was a little worried there what it was going to look like. But, uh, hey, it's worked out for them. And, uh, I mean, honestly, call me crazy. Probably going to be between them and Centerville for that district title, I'd imagine. <laughs> uh, That's t- we got our last question. It's team to watch out for in the final month. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, well, spoiler alert: Leon and Centerville are playing next week. It's probably going to be for a district championship. Yeah, I would think so. Um, and my other two teams on the list, I'm sure teams you guys had on the list as well. Uh, Rudder five and zero. Oh, yeah. Enough said. Somerville, I wrote about yeah. them this week. Four and one. Uh, crazy to think too, you know, because you think back to last year and you go, oh well, Somerville, you know, they won two games, so just a two-game improvement. But one of those games was by forfeit, so uh, hey, they're feeling pretty good. And uh, right now, too, this year, two of those wins are in district, so uh, Somerville's kind of got themselves primed for potentially a playoff spot. Uh, I think they still got to probably would win, probably at least one more, I'd say, gets you in. One or two. One or two. But more. they're gonna they're gonna get there. But they should get there. Um, but yeah, but. Those are my kind of three big surprise teams there. And I think we may talk a little bit about this in the next in the next segue as we get past this one. Uh, but the next two weeks are big for Somerville, especially with Burton and Grager back to back. We'll talk about that a little bit later, I'm sure. But that that's really that really stuck out to me. You mentioned two and zero. Oh. That, that, that that's your district driver's yeah. seat for winning the districts. So the next two weeks will be big for them. All right, Andrew, who's your team to watch over the next month? I got Madisonville. Madisonville kind of hasn't really been, you know, they had a really, really tough non-district slate. Uh, I think you t- wrote about it. Uh, it's been almost a month since they've won a game. It didn't seem like it's been that long. Madisonville heading into district now. Uh, they've got plenty of weapons on offense. I'm curious if, you know, that's a team that they can put it together, if they can, you know, build off of the tough non-district and be able to p- get that prepared for district. Uh, I think it's a team that can make a run. So give me Madisonville. Jake? Uh, I'm going to go Franklin. Um, Franklin was my number one. The more I've listened to you guys, though, I want to add another team to my list, which, Alex, you might have picked them, maybe not. But uh, Navasota is another one, I think. It's not on my list. Oh, Good okay. Job. Never mind. <laughs> uh, but, no, we'll start, stick with Franklin, though. You know, district plays here for them. They're t- sitting at 2-2. Two and two. Uh, I know that's probably not a place Franklin fans are probably used to, at least not the last couple years of being, hey, we're, we're 500, what? But, uh, you know, it's been a tough, tough sledding for them in, in non-district. Um and, you know, I talked to them way back when they were 2-0. Uh, yeah, because, no, wait. Yeah, they started off 2-0. and um, And, you know, something Coach Fannin talked about at that point was just like, hey, I want to just see how we keep continuing to grow here. And, you know, now that district's coming up, I'm kind of curious to see how they continue to grow through district because, you know, it's not going to be easy in that district. But if they can put it together, hey, are they going to be – if they can put it together in district and start to get some of that confidence, some of that mojo back – then I kind of feel like, all right, they're in, in good shape once the playoffs hit. So that's uh, definitely my number one. And then Navasota is another one. District plays here for them. They're two and three. I don't know about you guys, but Navasota has been kind of a surprise for me. Um, you know, we knew they were going to be young. It's a new coach. But uh, sitting at two and three, going into district, you get Needville this week. That's probably another matchup, I'd say, that's probably going to be probably for the district title or, or pretty close. So I know it's the opener. But uh, if Navasota can come away with the win, it uh, goes a long way. And uh, I think I think Navasota could contend, should contend for a playoff spot this year. I think that's fair to say. And yeah, they really bounce back after that season opener. They've kind of looked like you've just seen them getting better and better over the course of the weeks. 
Absolutely. My team to watch, I'm going with Bremond. Ooh. Okay. Look, they're flying under the radar. They're out of the top 10 in 2A Division 2 because they lost to Mart. That was a bit of a harsh, bit harsh by the way. Well, yeah. <laughs> a bit <laughs> harsh. It was a close game. They lost by six. Yeah. How many teams lose to Mart by six? There's a <laughs> lot of teams that would like to lose to Mart by six. Yeah. Okay? Look, they beat Wortham last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, that seems to be probably one of the better teams in that district. They won by, like, 30. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chilton's down. They've had a couple of good seasons in the the last couple of years but they're 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 struggling right now i'm not sold on goldthwaite yet um i know that tank scott is legit sam kazowski has good passing numbers and they have the brazos valley's top two tacklers and tanner scott and eddie carrizales i mean if if you don't want a team that's more well-rounded than that especially at the 2a division two level Tell me who to go with, right? And so what I'm trying to say is I think this schedule sets up for Bremon to go on a tear. Mm. And if they can get the train rolling, all right, we'll see if they can beat Mart again in the playoffs and see if they can make a six-point loss maybe into a six-point win. <laughs> so count me as one watching the Tigers down the home stretch of the season. I do want to talk a little bit about Sam Kozowski because he was someone at seven on sevens this past year. They, they, they weren't quite sure what the, the quarterback was going to look like. They had two guys thrown out there. To, so to see his growth kind of as a freshman, especially just from the summer to where he is now and then to have it, the amount of guys around him that can help him out as well is really, really big and key for a freshman. So I just wanted to mention his growth has been really noticeable this year so far. Well, we do have some games this week. We're just going to talk about our local games real quick before we wrap up. Um, kind of uh, on opposite ends of the spectrum for the College Station schools and the Bryan schools. Let's start with the Bryan schools because that's where the stakes are this week. Bryan's at Harker Heights. They're playing for the district lead. Uh, Harker Heights is definitely the favorite in this one. But look, Bryan's offense is really clicking right now. Yeah. And if they can get in a shootout with Harker Heights – I wouldn't count out the Vikings uh, in that one because they they are really they are really showing that they've got some things going on, on that side of the ball. Points, points, points. That 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 should, should kind of be the mantra of this game based off of these two teams last few weeks. That's all I got to say. Hey, okay. just look at last week. They both put up seventy points. Yeah. Uh, You're going to that one. I am going to that yeah. one. Yeah, uh, yeah. They both put up seventy points last week. Uh, Harker Heights did it against Colleen. Brian did it against Cove, so uh, now they meet. So let's see what happens. Uh, should be a good one. Going to be. A, I think I'm probably going to spend all 30 minutes just on my guess. All 30 minutes at halftime, probably doing the box score. If uh, that probably, if you're a betting man, I'd bet on that. Uh, and, and that's just not because I'm a slow typer. That's because. And, and uh, now that we've said this, it's going to be like a 10-7. <laughs> yeah, we did say fight. that. But, but. Uh, yeah, it should be a good game there uh, at Harker Heights. Uh, interesting to see what the Vikings uh, throw at them. Back home here in Bryan, uh, Rudder's hosting Waco University, and this is Rudder's district opener. Mm-hmm. Waco U is kind of a dangerous team. They've got a lot of star power. It sounds like London Smith is probably going to play the receiver for them this week. He'd been out uh, earlier this year. But, look, if Rudder can get a win, all right, they're, they're, on, they're on the scene and they're going to be playing Brenham next week. A win goes a long way. Andrew, you're the rudder guy. <laughs> What's it going to take for rudder to get this win? I mean, Ezar even mentioned it to me this week when we were talking. He says, hey, they've got a ton of talent on the outside. They've got J.D. Bell coming in from Mart, obviously, is coming. He's fitting into that offense quite nicely. Uh, he knows what that offense is capable of. He said, hey, they're, they're going to get their plays. They're, they're going to get some chunk plays. They're going to be able to do what they want at some points. The key was to create havoc plays. He was not worried about the offense. He believes our, the rudder offense can continue to do what it's doing. But he really wanted to focus on the defense creating havoc plays, creating turnovers, something we kind of talked about with Brian earlier this year. Uh, I think it was after the Magnolia West opener. Uh, but just continuing those big havoc plays. And you mentioned London Smith. This may be one of the best. I know they won't be going against each other physically on the field, but wide receiver versus wide receiver, London Smith versus Jaquise Martin might be one of the best in 5AD2. Um, both have a plethora of offers. So that one should be exciting if you just want to see really good athletes and really good talent. It's going to be over the field on Friday. Well, across town in College Station, Anum Consolidated and College Station are both prohibitive favorites in their matchups. 
Tigers coming off a bye. They got Kyle Lehman. Um, Lehman's a team that's really struggled this year. Consol's got the hardest games behind them. I think the key for them now is stay the course, keep your focus, don't let your foot off the gas, stay healthy, and find ways that they can get better among themselves before they go into a playoff bracket that Jake and I were doing the math yesterday or the day before. Well, and credit to you. It was all you. Uh, well, I'll yeah. give you credit there. <laughs> That region is a little more loaded than I think we thought it might have been at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you and I were talking round one, you'd play, uh, if you're Consol, if if what holds right now, you'd play, play a fourth place team. Fourth place team. But then in the second round, you get either you'd Probably Lufkin either get or Lufkin or Galveston Ball, Ball, who are both in the top ten right now in 5A Division One, yeah. And then on top of that um, – there's a chance that they'll see um, another solid team out of the Houston school in round three. Yeah. Not to mention then if you got to round four as they did last year, who knows? You could get a rematch with College Station. You could see the other loser winner of Galveston Ball, Lufkin. I mean, it's uh, I, I think going into the season we had this notion that 5A Division One Region 3 was going to be like, down this yeah. year but i think it's i think what it's showing is that it's more top heavy than it is down mm-hmm. like the teams at the top are really good and you're gonna have to play them to get through <laughs> yeah because i was gonna say in region four too i think the other thing we were talking about if you, you get past round four round five state semifinals potentially you got smith and valley which both College Station and Consol have a lot of history. You could, <laughs> although Recent history. Smithson Valley lost last week to really? San Antonio Piper, one of the new schools over there in, in the northeast San Antonio area. Um, that's I was looking at the district standings in that one the other day. That district's nuts because Smithson Valley's 1-1. One one. They got Piper at 2-0. and oh. New Braunfels, the Unicorns, they're 2-0. Mm-hmm. and oh. Okay? Um, that's, that's, a, that's a really good district. Um, it'll be interesting to see who comes out of that district and if one of our College Station teams is playing them in the fifth round of the playoffs this year. <laughs> but uh, College Station, they're playing Bastrop, Cedar Creek. Um, I think that this is a game that, similar to Consult, right? College Station, stay the course. Don't let your foot off the gas. That offense has been humming the last couple weeks. Defense has put together a couple of really good performances. I was impressed they held Hendrickson to 14 points. Yeah. Um, you know, All I picked in the second Col- quarter, too. I picked College Station to win that game, and but I didn't. I don't know if I would have expected it to be by as much as it was. I mean, a win by 44 points over them was really impressive. And so what I'm trying to say is College Station, do what I – needs to do what I think uh, I said about Consol, and uh, we'll see how the Cougars can – Keep those wheels turning. Got to send the seniors out on a good note. Senior night. Oh, it's senior night. How about that? Yeah, I think they got, what, 50, 60 seniors? They got that's a what, lot. That's what, that's what Stoney told me, I think. 60? Uh, 50 to 60. Is he? Really? That's what he said. Wow. I mean, I trust his math better than mine. I mean, he's so. a math teacher, so yeah. I don't trust his math. I just didn't realize it was that many. They they don't have a lot of underclassmen on that team. Like I think they only got like two or three sophomores playing on that team this year. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, anyway, any final thoughts, guys? Super excited. That's it. This was fun. I like doing the the awards. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Maybe we'll do it again after the season. Yeah, we kind of have to. Kind of have to. All right. We we got a long way to go before that, so be sure to check TheEagle.com for all of our coverage on high school football here in the Brazos Valley. We'll see you next week on the Brazos Sports Prepscast.